Hey, YouTubers, Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. Guys, to get time to get serious. Uh, last night, uh, don't forget to check out the, if you can, go on the channel. We did a last minute Mike of the Night show. It was really good. Had a couple of guests on. Uh, uh, two guests that I haven't had on on the show ever, and then I had a new, uh, just a, re a return guest to give us an update on some information on what's happening with uh, with this this, this unknown entity of a virus that we're that we're dealing with. And here it is, guys. It's called Mike in the Night: Shadows in the Streetlights. Uh, last night's episode, uh, last Saturday's episode is Mike in the Night Mind Games. We had about four, fourteen to sixteen people call in from the Commonwealth, uh, called in and to give us an insight on what they think and how this is psychologically affecting them so check that out guys don't forget to check out the six hour mike and the nightathon so if you're in lockdown go to the channel there's plenty to watch here okay guys uh don't forget to set your reminder here to home sweet home trends in the housing market 200th episode how we're completely bought out of our own markets and mike and the night save a prayer for me now this saturday we'll have collins and let me know what you guys think all right here goes guys so we got the kobe numbers here we're at 1.4 million cases are are set to double if this if this if this increase continues that you're seeing here if this continues then cases should double in 11 days according to so it'll be 3 million confirmed right so um this is a this is a very big deal and it's history rewritten we are rewriting history here why because if you go on last night's show we broke down a lot of articles and we actually broke down a lot of common sense. Here's the article here. So we were going over all the all articles that we could find and uh, advertising and propaganda and all kinds of news and stuff that, that was out there. Public notice. This is from 19th of October, 1918. Notice that hereby, given that in order to prevent the spread of the Spanish influenza, all schools, public and private churches, theaters, moving picture halls, pool rooms, and other places of amusement and lodge meetings are to be closed until further noticed. All public gatherings containing of 10 or more are prohibited. So we went through the show and we went over a lot of these um, articles that were up and we are rewriting history. We are rewriting what's happened 102 years ago. See? All theaters closed until further notice by the mayor. And there's articles out there that so much of it pretends to what's happening exactly today. Wash your face. Sorry, wash your hands and face. And they even tell you how to how to make a face mask. Here, they show you how to make a face mask. Must wear a face mask when you're in certain areas in public. And then they even started passing uh, rules that you must wear a face back mask when you're out in public, period. So this has happened 102 years ago. Now... We are, we are doomed to repeat ourselves, right? Always. History is doomed to repeat once you forget it, right? So here it is. So now, Germany's passed China quite a bit. And Iran, I said by this Saturday, will pass China if they don't skew their numbers. United Kingdom will pass China by Monday next week. Uh, Turkey, Switzerland, Belgium, every, every country on this list will pass China. So that's what's going to happen here. So one... I told you guys from the last week of December in 2019, the video is there, go see it, that this came from China. We don't know what we're dealing with, the Chinese lie. If it came from America, then I'd be like, ah, hogwash. Let's see what, what, what plays out from this type of thing, right? Well, let's get some feedback, you know, but it, 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 it originated in China. And the Chinese did their best to keep this under wraps. And the Chinese did everything humanly possible to make sure that nobody knew about this until the end of December. When everybody, when everybody, and then once they put Wuhan on lockdown, they gave the people with credits, or let's say currency, gave them enough time to, to move out to the cities, uh, like the UK, Canada, America, to bring this, to, to kind of get this out of China as quick as possible, and then shut down the city. So this is it, guys. That's what I think that's, that is happening. And the deal is we don't know what we're testing for. And I'm going to show you an article right here why from, from an actual fake news network, a mainstream media. So here it is, guys. So your total case is here. Let's go to look at total new cases. Now, USA, look, wow, that's a lot less cases than usual. That, that looks good. Mexico is going up a bit. But everything looks like there's a lot less new cases going on. This is very interesting. Well... 
this is why. Ontario confirms, this is the province of Ontario in eastern Canada, 379 new COVID-19 cases, but testing declines. Premier Ford also warns Ontario still facing dangerous shortage of protective equipment. So, at, in the beginning of January, when a lot of people were asking for Canada to close direct flights from China, Canada said it wasn't that much of a big deal. It wasn't. Now they're twisting it and saying that this is actually a pretty big deal, right? So I'm not saying this guy in, in general, this gentleman here with the box, uh, Mr. Ford. I'm not saying him in general. I'm saying a lot of people were like, let's, you know, protect the citizens of our country. You can't really do that in Canada. It's, it, it, there's a lot under underlying um, agendas going on that we can't close direct flights from China. You can close direct flights from, from Portugal and Spain and Germany. It doesn't matter. But you can't close from China. And there's a reason why. I'll, I'll bring... Uh, go watch other of my videos. You'll see what I'm talking about. The province reported another 379 cases of COVID-19 Tuesday, but saw a continued decline in testing since the start of the month, with a drop of from 62,000... 6,200 test results in April 1st to just 2,568 today. The province's total number of confirmed cases is now 4,726. The official tally includes 153 deaths, uh, though CBC News has compiled data from local health units and counted the least 177 deaths throughout the province. Of those, 1,802 are considered resolved. More than 500 healthcare workers in the province have tested positive, representing ab about 11% of all confirmed cases in Ontario. Another 691 are awaiting results. In my opinion, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking, I am thinking, and we had Eduardo on the show last week telling us they're, they're um, testing for influenza B. So that could be what they're testing for, and then they automatically get tested positive for COVID-19. We're not sure what we're doing. We don't know what we're doing. That's the deal. That's why you get so many false positive kits. That's why I keep telling you guys to be careful. Once this broke out in China, I knew this was bad news. I knew this was really bad news, and I'm not trying to fear monger. Protect yourselves. Protect your family. Wash your hands. Don't go out if you don't need to. Wait for this to pass. It happened 102 years ago. The articles are all there. From the Chicago Tribune or the Tribute, the, 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 the New York Times, all the articles we read last night from all over the United States and Canada that was dealing with this. The number of tests Ontario has completed daily has dropped steadily over the past week. So the number of tests have dropped. Could it be that the tests are expensive and they don't know what they're testing for? A worrying trend, according to doctors who argued that the widespread of testing is the only way to get an accurate picture of the spread of COVID-19 and a crucial tool uh, to make sure those who are infected don't transmit the virus further. Why would they drop off tests? The number of tests is definitely not the curve we want to see flattening, Dr. Yoni uh, Fidoff, an assistant professor in family uh, medicine at the University of Ottawa. Uh, yeah, he's right. Province not trying to, to limit tests. Health, so the now health officials saying the province and Ministry of Health had targeted conducting 5,000 tests per day by the, end of the, by the end of March, increasing weekly to reach a goal of peak of 19,000 tests per day to the, till the third week of April. Uh, 16 people died in Ontario nursing home before sick residents were separated from, from the healthy. Ontario now has a lab capacity that runs 13,000 tests per day, but the province's COVID-19 assessment centers are only submitting 3,500 tests per day, said Haley Chazen, Director of uh, Media Relations for Health Minister Christine Elliott in an email. The surplus in capacity means that we can now look at testing more people, particularly priority populations, including health care staff, residents and staff in long-term care and retirement home and indigenous communities, wrote Chazen. We expect that to have more to say about the new testing strategy that makes full use of this capacity shortly. So are they testing less people? Are they testing more people? William said that testing centers aren't at capacity and urge everyone with symptoms or who may have been exposed to someone with the virus to get tested. We have been encouraging people with any of these symptoms to go forward and get assessed. We aren't trying to limit that, 
So here it is, tests completed. So as time goes by, we're getting more and more increases of cases, but we're getting less and less tests completed. So we're going back pretty much to the uh, last day of uh, last week of March tests. We got a lot of tests here and then it dropped off and then now they're testing less and less. 51 outbreaks at long-term care homes, three Ontario, uh, three, uh, th uh, three more at Ontario jails. See, of the 614 total cases that have required hospitalization, 233 are intensive care units and 187 are on a ventilator. And that's scary. There have been a total of 51 outbreaks at long-term care homes in Ontario. Meanwhile, the province confirmed that uh, three Ontario jails experienced outbreaks between March 20 and 27. One inmate tested po uh, positive at Mennonoth, uh, Mennonith, Mentonith uh, Correctional Complex. Three inmates and one staff member tested positive at the Toronto South Detention Centre. One staff member tested positive in Hamilton. So here it is, guys. So here is... Uh, confirmed COVID. So what they're trying to do, what if they're just not testing people anymore so you get less people confirmed positive so people don't freak out? But then it goes back to what the first doctor said here that if we don't test people, then they're just going to transmit the virus even further, right? So confirmed cases there. So I, I really feel uh, faulty masks recalled. New online portal matches skilled workers with employers. Uh, warnings for first responders, layoffs, uh, donation bins overflowing, which is good. I like to see donation bins overflowing. I like to see people helping out each other. This is a big deal. Why? I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm actually trying to tell you guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. This ain't a joke. Why BC flattening the COVID uh, curve while numbers in central Canada surge? Uh, numbers in central Canada are surging. And look at BC. No, 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 there's no. Uh, our major cities in British Columbia uh, and British Columbia are major. Uh, some of our cities are predominantly Chinese. And they've got uh, store workers or food workers working in the big cities in, Va in Vancouver and, and Richmond and other places that have tested positive for COVID and have been working with symptoms for, for weeks and months. That was a video I did here on the channel. Go down here if you want to catch up on that. It's right here. Food price hike. Oops. Food price hike right here. Food price hike. And then I did a face mask wars where all these countries are ripping each other off for, for uh, face masks. All these countries, every country, nobody's innocent in this. Why? Because Quebec is actually testing. Quebec is going out on limb and testing anywhere from eight to 15,000 per day. And that's why Quebec is getting more and more cases. Ontario's dropping off and British Columbia. Look at that. There's nothing going on in BC. Look, they got this fixed. Look at this. There it is there. So, so it looks like British Columbia is in the clear here. There's like no cases. So I think I have nothing to worry, right? I don't think so. I don't believe I don't believe anything anymore. Co uh, COVID nineteen could kill forty percent of small businesses. A survey, so people are taking a kick in the pants, and it breaks my heart, man. It breaks my. Heart. I own a small business in town. I I'm okay. I'm not worried. Uh, I, I mean, I got all my security put up. Everything's good. I'm not concerned about y you know, um, um, for myself, but I'm concerned for a lot of others. Why? Because this sets off a, 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 a chain of breakdown that ultimately will affect my business. And not the COVID, but the other closures of stores makes the downtown core where I am less attractive, brings less people, less tourism, and then it affects my business and my family too, right? So owners of a whopping 40% of Canadian small businesses are worried that the pandemic will force closure of their operations, a survey has found. Only 8% of uh, small businesses indicated uh, they are now open according to the survey of 10,500 small businesses owners by the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses. So this is a huge deal. A lot of people put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into their business. I did too, and I, I, you could visually see it here. I made a, right here, Project Tabletop. I made a, uh, a little series here on my channel where I, I took the, the town's drug den. Uh, I took the town's drug den and I converted it into a, a tabletop game store. It's nine episodes long. I worked really hard to make this series and uh, show how people how their dreams could come true, right? He's kind of fat and he could barely read. So the landlady sold the building across the street. I took this building and you should see what I converted. It's the old, it's an old drug den in town. 
They had couches and TVs in there. Something nice and clean. Come on and join Mike on this new adventure with Project Table Talk. So I converted the old drug den in town into something nice. So I did I did put a lot of effort into this, you know? And to see it all blow away to the scatter to the wind, it, it hurts, you know? Uh, 21 more COVID-19 deaths in Ontario. Cases total increased by 379. And... Um, so here it is. It only affects old people. Now, 26.7% of all patients are between ages 20 and 39. 26.7. 35% are uh, ages between 40 and 59. I thought it was old people, China. China is China right here. China is full of crap. So now we're paying the brunt of it. Why? Why did Canada and Australia and New Zealand work slow on this while Trump closed direct flights in from China almost when, once he found out how serious this was? Why did Canada, New Zealand, and the United Canada, New Zealand, and Australia kept their flights open because they believed in what China had to say? They believed in what China was telling them. They believed that China would never lie. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We are headed towards massive uncertainty because we're not sure where to look anymore. All I have to say: stay safe, stay with your family, keep each other sane. Um, read books. Books are full of knowledge, regardless if you agree or disagree. Just watch videos. Uh, hang out with uh, people online, you know. Play video games for once, <laughs> for those that don't. Let me know, guys. I love you guys so much. Let me know. Th comment below, and thanks for watching.